Hello, and welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and see what I am up to today. If you don't know who I am, I like to call myself the Humble Bumble, and I am pollinating the world with the good news of the gospel, <laughs> honestly, any way that I can, and, and maybe if you saw my video last week, this is what I was wearing the day a preacher man tried to have his way with me. Before I get into anything, guys, my video's kind of uh, taken off. I've actually got more subscribers. People are interested in this. Praise God, my family's starting to grow. You know, I absolutely love it when anybody wants to be a part of my family. Whether they are saved, whether they are unsaved, confused, or honestly just looking for something to believe in, I am not pious, and I will never beat anybody with scripture. I am just here to help through my life experiences, through my spiritual battles, and this happens to be mine. And you apparently want to be a part of it. <laughs> so thank you very much. But today, I kind of just want to talk a little bit about some things that I remember growing up in the church system. Things that people would say, things that, you know, people were talking about. I picked up on all sorts of stuff. And one of those things was Asheville, North Carolina. We also have to remember that in the Bible, Jesus ate it with the publicans and sinners. You know, people would still give him down the road about it. But there is a right way and a wrong way. When he ate with these people, they were more open to receiving the gospel and the word of God than his own people were. And this is kind of what I want to talk about. A lot of people in the church system seem to believe that you need to surround yourself with Christians all of the time if you're a Christian. This is not true. We are to be a light to everyone. Anywhere we go, even to Asheville, you know, cesspool of sin. But it was known as a bad place. It was known as crazy people live in Asheville. Asheville is so full and overrun of homeless people. And there is, you know, I've heard some crazy stories on the news in the last few months, you know, of, of some crazy things that have happened. But remember, guys, this is just one city out of many. It's not a specific place. It's not a specific color. Evil is not a specific anything. This is why it's so important to look at one's character versus what they say, because talk is cheap. It really is. Talk is cheap. When I was in Asheville, so I'm going to tell you a funny story. <laughs> when I was growing up, anytime that me and my mom and my sister for maybe a doctor's appointment or whatever, <laughs> we would drive through Asheville. And if we did and had to go downtown, Mama would always want to lock the doors. Well, this was because she was afraid of carjackings or whatever because we live, or I grew up, on the outside of the city. I lived in the country, and so we didn't live that racy city life. So my mom was always so scared. But we would kind of drive through slow so that we could look at the people. We would drive downtown because I, we didn't go much, but mostly it was, you know, people dancing to strange music that I had never heard. Um, it was a lot of homeless people. It really was, especially at night, you know, because they do, they come out. But I'm going to remind you guys that whatever state that they live in, whoever, they're human beings. God still died for them, just like he did for you. So we don't need to put ourselves up here and think that, oh, Asheville's a terrible place. And I'm saying this because today I went to go get my hair cut in Asheville. The girl that cuts my hair is probably one of the sweetest people I know. <laughs> and I just absolutely love her. She gives me the most amazing haircuts and she's just so sweet. And, you know, even though I believe that she is a non-believer, um, she still lets me talk about God. And I like that. Um, think about it. Just like when God would go and eat with the publicans and sinners, 
he was always about his father's business. So no matter where I go, even if it's to Asheville, it could be, I don't know, it could be anywhere and anywhere. Wherever you are, it is never a bad time to talk about God. Only there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. We don't need to, as Christians, shove it down people's throats. But I do know that the people that are in the church system, they have a terrible bad tendency to judge people straight away, you know, judging a book by its cover. But they are always so quick to say, don't judge me. Only God can judge me. They'll use the Bible against you because they know the scripture somewhat or like a preacher man, he knows scripture. So if he wants to make a point or do something he ought not to do, he can use scripture. He can pervert it. He can twist it to make it say what he wants it to say or look a way that he wants it to look just to get what he wants out of it. This, my dear friends, is what we call a wolf. So, like I said, I may not have a church family right now, but believe me, as a Christian, we desire to be with people of like mind. We want to have that church family, so I know that God's going to send it to me one day. But if you think about it like a relationship, you don't jump into the first relationship just because it's the right thing to do. You wait. Until God sends you that right person at that right time, you know. Otherwise, you'll just end up getting divorced. And that's what happens for the most part in the world today. And that is very sad. And if, and if anybody is going through that right now, my heart goes out to you. It really, really does. I can remember people saying the most terrible things about Asheville. And I know a lot of people that live around me in the churches that I've been to haven't even really been downtown. They don't know what it looks like. So that's why I wanted to take some pictures for everybody. I wanted to show you the things that I saw when I was downtown with my son. I am so glad to have my son back. God blessed me so much. Not this year, but last year for Halloween, I wanted to take advantage of, uh, I guess, what it was. I don't celebrate holidays. I don't celebrate Halloween. I'll get into that later. It's a big, long story, but no, I do not celebrate Halloween. You know, there was a point where I felt like I just didn't know if I could feel anything. I, I just was looking to feel something, anything. And I had this urge and idea to maybe go to a haunted house because it was, I was able to do that at the time. So my husband was like, yeah, we'll go. I mean, if that's what you're okay with doing. And I said, I don't know why. Maybe God will be with me and I'm supposed to learn something from it. I don't know, but for some reason I have a desire to go. Anyhow, I felt in the end, it was the biggest waste of money. It really, really was. But the actors were wonderful. I mean, if you're worldly and that's what you're doing, by the world standards, they did a good job. It's just something was missing. I can remember walking into the haunted house and they had so much stuff like going on on the outside of it. They had some characters coming out and trying to scare you and stuff dressed, you know, in costumes like they typically do. But mm, I was just taking pictures for my husband. You know, he was having fun with them, whatever. But I was honestly cold and I was just ready to get into the haunted house. I was looking for something. I just didn't know what. So I'm walking into the haunted house. They let us in. And due to COVID, you know, because this was not this year, but last year. And due to COVID, we had to walk a great ways apart from any other person that was there. And so me and my husband were alone, which I guess if you like that kind of thing, would be fun because it was a haunted house outside in the dark that they had legitimately set up. It was somewhere in Hendersonville. It was supposed to be a really good one. I'm not saying anything bad about the haunted house. The actors did great. You know, it's just some, there was something that was wrong with me and I was searching for something again. I don't know what. So as we're walking through, there's people trying to jump out, you know, um, at one point there's this girl and she looks dead zombie-like. 
her makeup was great, you know, again, they were good actors, but I guess I did this without even thinking about it. She started to run away, you know, like in a scary movie where you can never catch the ghost, but I started to follow her and I don't know why. And I didn't realize it until a point she was running to get away from me. And then we go to the other rooms and, you know, I mean, sure, people are jumping out at us, but if anything, I'm just saying, hey, look at you, you know, something like that. I just, I'm walking through. I'm not afraid. And then at the end of it, I remember walking out, you know, and we're going to the, you know, outside where the little shops where you can buy stuff and hot drinks and everything are at and there was this man that came up out of nowhere and he had a chainsaw and he was chasing people with it a lot of people hate that so bad you know and it can be so bad but if you are so against that i strongly recommend that you would not take your children but if you do take your children there was these two little girls that was running away from this man and he was messing with someone else but they were terrified and they couldn't have been no more than 10 years old i said please will you stop for me for just a minute please they were two precious little girls looked like they might have been cheerleaders or something they were just scared to death and i said please just listen to me for a minute will you and they said okay and i said would you believe that that man is running around he cannot touch you by law and not only that but that chainsaw that he is holding doesn't even have a chain on it. It's not dangerous. So calm down. And they were all like, are you serious? What like tears running down their face. Are you telling the truth? And I was all like, yes, believe me, I am. And it was so convenient that at that time, he chose me and he run up to me and he took that chainsaw and went Rrrr. and then when he did i just stood there i can remember he tried again and he took the chainsaw but this time he made a quick jump at me and i stayed in my place i just stood there and then i can remember uh he looked at me it was kind of strange but he kind of got close to me. Again, they can't touch you. But he got close and he looked me in my eyes and he said, there's something different about you. And run away so fast. So fast. I don't, I don't know. But I'm telling you, I'm a very spiritual person. So I believe that, that there are demons around all of the time. You cannot believe in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ without believing in the power that he gave to Satan. You just can't. And you have to know that demons, you can't see them. They're all around you. Oh my goodness. And they carry things that only you think you would know to somebody else. They won't tell you your future, but they can make a very good guess. And if you think about it, kind of like Hannibal Lecter, I mean, Jodie Foster could just walk into the room and he can tell her things that he would have no clue about. He was not there. It's just her facial gestures. He had only a few years to do this. Demons have had centuries. They know what they're doing. <laughs> so there's a point that I'm trying to make here. And that point would be when I was in Asheville, I felt safe. You know, I am telling you, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in your home. You could be at church even because remember the church shootings? I'm serious. Anywhere you are and something dangerous can happen in the place that you thought was safe. But I went to the haunted house looking for something to scare me, I guess. Nothing happened. But I did find out that I was strong. I know that that comes from God. I know that that does. But I know that when I was in Asheville, I felt safe. The people were kind to me. And honestly, when you go out to eat, if you might be lucky enough, there could be a couple of people sitting next to you that will spike up a conversation with you and you can talk about the Lord. But do it in a gentle way. Don't ever shove it down their throats like a broomstick. Do it in a very gentle way. 
and show them the love of Christ and think about what it was like when Jesus sat down and ate with the publicans and sinners. His people are the people that rejected him. The scary things are not in the haunted houses because those things are run already by the world, you know. They're not in the bars. Those people are already doing his bidding. The worst place I've ever felt in my life was in church. And that is because the devil is real. Demons can sit on the front pew. They can even stand behind the pulpit. This is his realm. He is the God of this world. But I don't know where God's leading my channel. I just know that something is happening. Something good is happening again. Just like I said at the front of the video, I'm rapidly growing in subscribers since I posted my last video. And here in the last two days, I've managed to get nearly 200 views and they continue to come. So if you subscribe to me, I want to thank you so very much for helping me to build my family. I know that God's going to give me one and I am so happy that you get to be a part of it. So I hope that somebody learned something today, somebody growed for God. I know that at some point over the weekend, I'm going to try and do like I did last week and put up another song. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, that was me singing with a group. <laughs> I just spliced my voice in it and made it seem like I was harmonizing with them because honestly, I would absolutely love to find someone who could do that for real and we could sing for real together. And I know that God's going to send that to me one day because I am not asking in vain and this is to spread the glory of God through pollinating the world through the good news of the gospel through song. So thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing in my ministry. I hope somebody out there grows for God and I will be seeing you a little bit later. Check out my skit that I came out with earlier this week, Silent Raffle at Church. I'm going to go ahead and let you go, but I want to let each and every one of you know that I love you and... I hope that you have a beautiful and blessed day. Please tell me why. It's all in my